welcome back. This is Tom, the Disabled Prepper, and today is Chapter 2 in our Pulmonary Protection Supplies uh, video. And if you recall, I had made mention of the fact that I was looking to get a higher level of filtration, a mask with a higher level of filtration than the ones I introduced in the original video, and I've done that. Um, and of course, just kind of as a quick recap, you recall this mask. Um, it does offer some level of protection, but nothing like I should really use regularly considering how compromised my pulmonary system is. So the second mask I'm going to show you, I've actually been using for some time. Uh, this was a gift to me. This is rated as an N95 mask. It's a reusable cloth-based mask. And you, you normally would think that, uh, well, of course, it's cloth-based, so it's going to filter out particulates. And that's very true. Um, you can also see it as a similar to the blue mask. It has a very, very tight fit to it. So you do get particulate, and you can tell just from the sound of my voice that it does have uh, filtering capabilities, obviously. The ear loops are almost dead on this, and... Uh, um, it's it served me well, but it's time has passed, but I can recommend it for those for instance who are uh, caregivers to people who have Protective undergarments and that need to be changed if they are unable to control their uh, Ball movements and such uh, and the reason I say that is because not only is this a cloth mask and you can see it's fairly thick it does have a pretty fair amount of protection strictly just from its thickness, but also um, you can get these replaceable carbon filters that uh, slip into this little pocket inside and you, kind of, you slip it in there and flatten it all out and you can see it's some pretty fair coverage. Not only does it give you particulate coverage, but also the carbon will protect you from smells and some organic things such as uh, like wood smoke or something like that. So I use this primarily for changing my, uh, cleaning the litter box. And no matter what anyone says, there's no such thing as dust-free litter. Now I don't want that dust in my lungs, so that's what I'm protecting myself about, with. That's what I'm protecting myself for. So that is a standard N95 mask. And N means it is not oil proof, and the 95 means it will, as, as kind of a recap, it will filter 95% of particulates in the air. Well, I just got my new mask day before yesterday, and this is it. This is, it's a 3M P100. Now these are considered respirators. They're called respirators, not masks, but I just call them masks because it's a shorter word, much easier to pronounce. Now this is a 3M P100, as you see. P means it is in fact oil proof, and the 100 means that it will filter out not 100% of particulates, but 99% of particulates. Now you say, well, why would they say 100 if it's only gonna do 99? Shouldn't it say P99? Yes. I mean, if we're gonna be literal and practical, yes, it should. But uh, the only way you can actually get 100% filtration of particulates is if you're going to going to go to, uh, for instance, one of those moon suits that have a um, a positive pressure system to it, or like in a clean room. A clean room has is where they would assemble uh, highly sensitive electronics, so you can't even have dust, and you in the air you have uh, something that covers your hair so a piece of dandruff doesn't fall in the electronics. So that's the only way you're going to get 100% filtration of, of particulates. For this level of mask or respirator, 99% is as good as you're going to get. So, uh, to let you know on that, um, now this mask, I when I ordered it, I thought I was actually getting like a box of 10 because it's $13.84. And the blue masks, as you recall, cost like $3 for 20 or something like that. So um, this respirator, this mask, as you can see, of course, comes with instructions. I'll read those later. <laughs> it 
And as you can see, see this is a, has an exhalation valve uh, so that when I exhale, um, it will uh, expel uh, the carbon dioxide and, and, uh, but will not allow it back in. Now, okay, granted, it's not gonna expel 100% of the carbon dioxide, but from the previous mask, you can see I'm gonna have much better exhalation of spent carbon dioxide. Well, not spent carbon dioxide, actually. Spent um, air, which has carbon dioxide in it, also um, because I've breathed out, exhaled. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep this not so, I'm gonna try to not use so many words to describe what I'm doing. But as you can see, there's also a, a metal nose piece, and you can see it's a fairly thick mask. And interestingly enough, which I didn't know when I was ordering it because the place did not have multiple pictures, it actually has a foam or a fabric seal. It's a kind of a fabric-y foam to it. Um, and as, a, as if you recall, uh, a mask or a, vent, a respirator will not seal well when you have the three-day scruff or the four-day scruff like I have. It just doesn't seal with the hair in the way. Well, with this, you get a far greater level of seal on even with facial hair, and that is necessary in order to achieve the 99% filtration of particulates. Now, as you can see, this is what it would look like on me. And I'm, I haven't put them, this is brand new. I haven't even set the straps up or anything yet. And so um, I am getting some, when I exhaled there, I felt some air come out of the top piece and go across the top of my head because of course, like I say, I was just holding it in place so you get an idea of what it looks like. But until I get the straps set up and fully adjusted, I am going to have some leakage, um, some exfiltration of air passing past the seal onto my face. Um, but, uh, so anyway, so that's the new mask that I'm going to be using every time I clean my litter box. I, I'm going to get a second one of these masks eventually that I'm going to keep in the car. For instance, if I'm traveling and, uh, as an example, three weeks ago, I went to look at a piece of property up on, in Eastern Arizona and I passed by the <clears throat> Grand Canyon. Well, there was a forest fire going on in the Grand Canyon, and so consequently, there was smoke in the air. It was very dark. Um, I mean, it wasn't, most of the fire had been put out, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been, but this would have been a perfect mask for me to have in that situation. Um, in the meantime, when I'm not using it, I'm gonna put it back in the bag, and I'm going to fold the top over and keep it as clean as possible because for $13.84 or whatever it was I paid for it, I want this to last as long as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and preserve that and keep it clean as possible. Now the last thing I wanna deal with when I'm talking about this, and I'm sorry this is taking a while, but a lot of people are gonna come up with the question, well, how long is that mask good for? And if even if you ask a manufacturer, they will come up with a box answer like, that mask is good for eight hours, or it should be disposed of after 12 hours of use. Well, that isn't necessarily the truth any more than your use by date uh, applies on, on food. If you take care of it, um, and for instance, in, in standard city air, yes, it's gonna do a much better job of filtering than my lungs will do, and it's gonna filter the smog and stuff like that out in the particulates, but let's say if I was going through an area like um, past the uh, Grand Canyon again where there was very thick smoke. Now, in very thick smoke, of course, it's going to have a much shorter lifespan than would if I was just breathing standard city air or air with inside my house to clean my litter box. So what the person who uses that mask is going to have to do is you will have to kind of Make a mental note of how easy it is to breathe in and out with that mask on when it's brand new. And then make a mental note as you continue to use the mask and the, and the fibers within the mask start to fill with particulates. Initially microscopic, but of course 
dust in the air and things like that. And you'll start to notice, let's say you are walking through a smoky area from a forest fire, you will notice that the mask will uh, become colored from soot and particulates in the air. So the primary thing you want to use as your determination to see how long that mask is lasting is how easy is it for you to inhale and exhale using that mask. If it gets to the point to where you have, actually have to physically <laughs> and force the air out of that exhalation valve, that mask is past its prime and should probably be replaced. But in the meantime, in a brand new condition, you should be fairly easily, normally be able to inhale, exhale without any extra effort. Um, and then kind of keep a mental note as this mask gets used, how much more difficult it is becoming to breathe in and out. And then you make your own determination on when you feel that mask should be replaced. <clears throat> That's the best advice I can give you on that. Otherwise, there's, there's obviously no clear-cut answer. We, we can't say specifically 12 hours. It might be four hours in the midst of a very smoky forest fire, forest fire or the fires like California had last year, the wildfires. Or it could be 100 hours using it in standard city air. This is something that the user is going to have to determine on their own. So anyway, I hope this uh, presentation helps you. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Hopefully you're getting some information out of the, my videos. Leave some comments below. Let's talk about this. Let's exchange information. We are a community preppers and we should be helping each other uh, prep for adversity and disaster. In the meantime, remember to always keep your nose in the wind and your eyes along the skyline until we meet again. Bye.